stuff and why we want to keep things kind of nice around here so <laughs> hopefully people keep coming I don't know too many people that want to go hiking through yellow star thistle and they have a bunch of that down in Whitebird um, so it's all around us and I think there's some south of us too I think uh, Adams yeah. County deals with the little population of yellow star thistle Adams does? I think so. Okay, it must be there around the Council Weezer area districts. But uh, but yeah, so be on the lookout for some of that stuff because you won't want it once it gets here. <laughs> Do you want to go over your photos and talk about the CWMA? Sure. And here's kind of a photo of what one of those weed washers that can sometimes look like when we go to the fire camps. They can pull them on trailers or whatnot. And it's so we're, similar to our ones that we wash the boats with too. But these don't get hot. <laughs> oh, those ones aren't hot water machines? Not all of them. Do they recirculate them? Oh, the yeah, they have a filter. Back filter, yeah. Yeah. You have to unclip. And then that Ed Maps, they're trying to get that going too, um, where you guys can download that even on your cell phone and report sightings of stuff. You know, the ISDA, all the, the CWMA lead points that come in, we put it on the Ed Maps. So there's a very good representation of what we actually have in Idaho on there already. Yeah. I've got their app. Ed Maps, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Then here's a quick thistle deal. I, I only brought one of these, but anyways, this shows that not all thistles are invasive. Some of them that we have around here are actually native. Okay. This is just some um, quick slides I put together. These are all pictures that I took around, most of them around McCall area. Um, just most of them are all. This one here is actually right across from the smoke jumper base. It's an infestation of spotted knapweed. And you can see the look on Tara's face. <laughs> she was just overwhelmed the size of this. This was actually about one plant. And then it's kind of spread out from there. But it's one plant can have 25,000 seeds per plant. Yeah, it was it was mind blowing, and then this actually is on the other side of the riverfront park, right next to um, Judge DeBoer's property. Um, this is a site where we've done uh, 
um, above release just because it's right close to the river. Um, we can't get in anywhere close with, the, with herbicides. It's either um, bugs or backpacks. And it's about an area that's, oh, about five acres now and growing. But we've done probably, well, in the last four years, we've done, well, releases the last four or five years. And this another area, spotted napweed. This is a whole field, 20 acres. And you can see how high it is. That's our UTV we got in. It was clear up to the top of the hood. Really? And we have got it down to where there's probably maybe 100 plants. Just kind of isolated right in the middle, and we'll hit it again this year. So this is another success story, I feel. But I don't have any after pictures. If you invite me back next year, I'll, <laughs> I'll visit it and take some after pictures. Did you Goats on that, or no? This was strictly herbicide, and there's a picture of the the little bug we've released. That's the spotted napweed root weevil. It almost looks like a little alien, really neat little critter. That's an excellent picture. I probably took about 50 pictures just to get that <laughs> perfect one. Yeah, he's smiling. Yeah, yeah, he was posing for us. And of course, the same location we found diffused napweed. And there's actually some, some napweed, some um, spotted napweed mixed in. There's a big old patch of uh, leafy spurge. We found that one in uh, 2010. Most of these, we had an a, a ARRA grant, what's the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. And it was a four year project. So it gave us time to get out in the field and locate a lot of these sites. And then, you know, most of the stuff the county does is on road right of ways and stuff, but this gave us a great opportunity to, to find Stan patches. Is this Stan and Weiser? No, this is, uh, actually, this was on Blackhawk on the River. Oh. This is another site where we released the uh, Leafy Spurge Flea Beetle, and that's West Mountain Road. This is a real close to Phil Solon's gravel pit, if you're familiar with that. West Mountain Road and a Hate Lane. And this is another site where we did bugs, and probably for the last four or five years we've had releases there. But it just, it's unbelievable. So the leafy uh, spurge flea beetle, does that also eat lettuce and stuff like that? No, it's uh, <laughs> most for, specific. Oh, it is most specific. Oh. Yeah. And that's the, uh, just a picture of leafy spurge in the fall growth stage. And that's actually probably the best time to kill it with herbicide because it goes through its fall growth and it's bringing in all the nutrients in the root system. So that's the best time to, to actually spray it with herbicide. It's kind of a really interesting plant. It actually, it's got little seed pods on it that explode and it'll throw them seeds like eight to 10 feet. I've actually been out there when our bug release <laughs> And they just pop, 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 and you're getting bombarded with seeds. Oh, so the herbicides kills the roots? Well, um, depending on what you use, yeah, it, uh, it'll uh, suck it down in through the root system. Because um, this plant here, and I don't have the specifics, but this has a tap root that goes like nine, ten feet deep. And if you don't kill the whole root system, it's just going to come back. And when you break it apart, it's like got kind of this milky stuff yep. inside it's it. Kind of and it can. Yeah, it can. If you got that milky sap, it can make you blind. It's very toxic. That's a picture of the flea beetle. And you see that little green ma or caterpillar. That's another bioagent. That's the, the hawk moth caterpillar. See, these here, we, uh, we actually go down to... Um, Washington County with our sweet nets and we helped Joey Malone with the Department of Ag and BLM and we actually caught these and released them. These, most of these were released Red Ridge and then the Blackhawk area and that kind of gave you more specific, you know, how small they are. <laughs> See, these are actually, there's two different types in here. There's the, the brown and the black flea beetle, but you can't really that's a, uh, an adult hawk moth caterpillar. Really, really cool That's looking. Nice. Of course, scotch thistle. We located this 
in that gravel pit across from the smoke jumper base. Mm -hmm. And these here, they all the seeds can last up to 39 years in the soil. So it's, you know, there's another good picture. Terry again, she found that one. And so they can grow up it, there. If you cut it off and it doesn't go to seed, does that do it? Eventually, because you're, you're weakening the plant. And then, of course, yeah, you don't go to seed. It doesn't spread. But it eventually will kill the plant because it's using up all of its energy then to, to regrow, yeah. reseed. Like spotted napweed, if you cut it down, it will go to bloom like within just a few days and it'll go to bloom, it'll be like ground cover because its main purpose in life is to reproduce. So it's gonna do whatever it can do to, to go to seed. So if the scotch thistle seeds last up to 38 years and you're trying and you're cutting something away and I always hear, well, you know, throw it in a garbage bag and then it goes to the dump and you have a seed that's lasting 38 years. Yep. Uh, what, yeah. Well, see, usually when we take it to the dump, well, literally what they tell us to is they, uh, they bury it. And, you know, they bury it, you know, 20 feet deep out the landfill. But, yeah, you're right. We could be taking it to the landfill, but maybe starting another infestation. So but, how about burning it, though? Well, burning it can, but uh, it's, it, it's not going to kill the, the root system. Oh, but I meant when you, oh, yeah. when you pull them up, put it on your burn pile, and then burn it all. Sure. This is another one we took at, out at the airport. Of course, when you burn it, some areas don't get all that hot, and so you just create the disturbance that the seed likes. Because we have areas where we've burned spotted napweed, and we got to keep going back to them, and it's been 12 years, and we're still finding spotted yep. napweed where we piled and burned it, where we didn't have any before. Yeah, you go out to slash piles. So, yeah. What do you do? Yeah, you go, first place we look is the, the slash piles where they burn the slash. And that's the first place we look for not to squeeze. Because anywhere the soil's disturbed, that's where you're going to see. that's probably more nutritious after it burns, just like mushrooms like it. <laughs> see, that look, at, see, Travis, he's only about five feet tall. So that one's not a mature, <laughs> mature yet. But that was right out there at the airport. Fill the oxide daisy. That's the one we had out there at the, that's the Bryant Ranch of the yellow pine. And with that, we also found huge infestation of yellow toe flies. And we, we treated the oxide daisy with milestone, but we did a bug release on the toe flies up there. And the, it has established. Not coming through hay? What's that? Hay, not coming through hay. Um, they think so, yeah, it was introduced. We found other bioagents, and, but they think they were, they piggybacked there. They don't, we don't know how they got there, but. They found it though. Yeah. But we did introduce some. The same bug on the Dalmatian toe flax, mm -hmm. but it seemed to be fairly effective on the yellow too, mm -hmm. at least in this area. Isn't there a native toe flax though? Or no? Okay. That looks like Not that I know of. No. I don't know. Well, it's similar to a snapdragon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the yellow toe flax also, you, you'll look it up in some old book that's called Butter Nays. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was in wildflower mix um, up mm -hmm. until just a little while ago. Yeah, that's yeah. not a nice one. Yeah, that's a rush skeleton weed, and I thought that was perfect. I found that. We went out looking for weeds, and there it was right next to our truck. <laughs> See, this is another one that disperses their seeds by wind, and the seeds got little like little parachutes on them, and they can travel depending on you know how steep the slope is. They can move up to five miles in the wind. That's the stuff like when you're driving down to Boise. Yep. Yeah. Once you get out of canyon and it looks like, I go, hey, it looks like the slopes are starting to green up. It's rush kill. Polly says they're not green up. <laughs> of course, another one there with the smoke jumper base in the background. That's a huge fill there with the spotted napweed. See, this is another one that uh, we got the funding from the, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. So we we put a lot of um, chemicals on the ground, a lot of control. I thought that was a pretty cool picture. Guy shot it off the wand of his sprayer, and that's the north approach to the airport. That field there was, see, that was a site we looked at for bio release, but it was such easy access with the ATVs, we decided to chemically treat it. And now you go up there, and they're still there, but you have to hunt for them. 
I mean, right there, you couldn't, when we first got there, you couldn't take a step without stepping on spotted napweed. Now that's, we just about got it clobbered. And where are all those airplanes going? To the airstrips out in the wilderness? Yes. And that's why we're finding that in the wilderness. My, my wife's with Master National has got to go out to a soldier bar field in the wilderness area and work napweed. There's a good picture of our yellow toad flax, and it does. It's a, of course it is in the snapdragon That's family, and it's a yeah. really pretty plant. It is. I have, I have some of those. <laughs> yeah. And it is poisonous to livestock. I just didn't know that some of it were. Yeah. Not a lot of birds. See, most of these are taken at the airport, and there's a big old patch of toad flax. We've been battling this for several years. In fact, the first couple of years, we've seen it. Well, everybody was con concentrated on the nap. We the stuff we really knew well, and we kind of didn't know what this was at first. And to start off small wasn't a big problem, and it just within a couple of years it just tripled in size. So, are there certain animals that like to eat this one? Not the, not the toad flax because it is poisonous mm -hmm. to it's poisonous. animals. Yeah. And then, of course, our beloved houndstone. <laughs> Actually, I took this. This is in my backyard. I live in Cascade. That's up on West Mountain. And I thought that was a really beautiful picture with the lake in the background. And driving around on these old Forest Service roads and logging roads, they're, they're everywhere. See, right in the middle of the road, so you run right over it, you spread the weeds. Yeah, it catches on your car. And deer trails and livestock trails are full. Yeah, I, I, I got some <laughs> pictures of a, a macaw we ran across, and it was its eyes were almost matted shut because it had hound's tongue seeds all over its face. But it was so blurry, I, I didn't want to put it in the slide. It was a bad picture. And then we also have a project on Elo Road here in McCall. It's our hand grub. We have an individual that's got the sensitivity to pesticides. So we, uh, we hand pull the whole section. There's five miles of road that we hand pull the whole area. But we've uh, enlisted the Idaho State Department of Juvenile Corrections to come up and, and help us out with this project. So we so get a, what are you hand pulling? Perfect. Most of this is a Canada thistle. Out of the cell. Yeah, there's, but there's a lot of yellow toad flags, rush, it's everything yeah. is on the road. But mostly Canada yeah, thistle. Pull out the roots. Well, it's yeah, there's. It's impossible to get all of the Canada thistle because they say 75% of that plant is below ground, and it's such a massive root system. Um, mm -hmm. That's why, you know, in my opinion, um, the best way to control Canada thistle is the chemicals, because then it's it it sucks it down in the root system, kills the whole plant. And then we got the grazing. These are actually the pictures we took over at the River Ranch, over at Judge Abor's property. He said earlier he, he hired about 250 goats and they were there for, gosh, four or five days. And this one looked like they were all on break except for just a couple of them <laughs> lounging around. <laughs> but this was a pretty big herd and they, they get these electrified, they're uh, like solar powered electric fences and they, ah, huh. especially with these little outfits that have, you know, 10, 15, 20, they got little fencing and they, they, <coughs> they, that's why they don't like to go very far because they stake them out and then they move them to this patch and they move them around. And usually they're around, they charge about $3 per head really? per day. And you know, it doesn't sound, but then when you have 250 goats at $3 a, a head. They're not very nice to camp in. No. Yeah. And then that's my last slide. I thought that was appropriate. Good reminder. Not a, not a good place to pitch your tent. That's, that's all I have. And McCall does have a CWMA project that they do. Yeah. Um, do you have that? Well, I got I just printed out a couple of brochures real quick. I only got a couple here, but yeah, we do have, um, we're, McCall is part of the Upper Payette Cooperative Weed Management Area, and we have um, some <laughs> spray days, 
If anybody's interested in volunteering, I believe it's on July 9th, we're going to be in McCall. 